This is video number three for PowerPoint module two in the Shelley Cashman book on Microsoft Office 365. We're picking up on page 2-37, Aligning and Distributing Objects. And there's a brief description of some of the alignment options on that page. Let's flip over to page 2-38. We're going to display some drawing guides. So we want to go to slide five. So click on slide five if you're not already there. Let's go to our view tab up here and let's turn on the guides. The next thing we want to do on the top of page 2-39 is turn on the ruler. And the last thing at the bottom of page 2-39 is turn on grid lines. So we've got a lot of different options here for helping us figure out where we're actually putting things on the slide. Let's flip over to page 2-40. Position the pointer on the horizontal guide in a blank area of the slide so that the pointer changes to a double-headed arrow and drag it to three inches below the center. So my horizontal guide is up here on the three-inch mark. And yours may not be there. That just happens to be the last time I had it placed somewhere in PowerPoint, I believe. Uh, we want it on the minus three-inch mark, three inches below the center of the slide. So get your two-headed arrow and click and drag it down to that point. Number two, we want to find the vertical guide, and the vertical guide happens to be over here on the left side. Again, yours may be someplace else. We want to position this five inches to the left of center. So drag it to the right, and when it gets right under the five, you can let go. Now we want to drag the left trapezoid shape so its lower left corner touches the intersection of the vertical and horizontal guides. So that's this corner right there. So drag it down, and when it gets right there. Go ahead and let go of the mouse. That's where we want it to be. We want to position the other two shapes. Take the vertical guide to two inches left of center. So drag it over to here. We want to take our oval or our circle in this case and put it so it touches the bottom guide and the left guide right there. Then number two on page 2-41, we want to drag the vertical guide to two inches right of center. So here's our vertical guide again, two inches to the right of center. And then we want to take this trapezoid and we also want to position it so that its lower left corner is right on the intersection of the vertical and horizontal guides. Now we're at the bottom of page 2-41. We're going to distribute those shapes. So we want to select everything except the arrow. So that's going to be a click on the first item and then a control click on the other two. So hold the control key down. Select those other two items. They should all have handles around them. Let's go to our shape format ribbon up here and click on the align button over here. And now we're going to flip over to page 2-42. We want to align them to the slide, not to object. So click align to slide. Pull the align menu down again. And we want to distribute them horizontally. So if we do that, the space between the left edge of this and the left margin will be the same as the gap between this and this, and that'll be the same as the gap between this and this, and that'll be the same as the gap between this and this, because we chose that we wanted to align them to the slide. Now let's go to the top of page 2-43 with the three shapes still selected, and our shape format tab displayed. It's got a different name than it did in his version. Click the Align button to display the Align Objects menu again. So let's go back up here. Click Align Middle. Middle alignment means between the top and the bottom. Center alignment means between the left and the right. So we should have equal amounts of space on the top as on the bottom here, and we do. Now let's go to the bottom of page 2-43. We're going to position the arrow. We want to drag a horizontal guide to three inches above the center. So our horizontal guide is way down here. We want to move it all the way up to the top. We want our vertical guide to 6.66 inches. So our vertical guide over here. And that's probably going to be all the way to the end. Then we want to take the arrow, click on the arrow, get the handles around it, and then go to get your four-headed arrow. Drag it up so that the top of it touches that horizontal guide and the right side of it touches that vertical guy. So now your slide should look like this.
Now let's flip over to page 2-44, flip a shape. Again, go back to our shape format tab up here and display the ribbon. And with the arrow still selected, we want to rotate it. Click on rotate. We want to flip it vertical so it's pointing up. Now it's behind this trapezoid, but it's in front of the circle and it's in front of this trapezoid here. We do have an option to send that backwards, which is what we want to do. We want to send it all the way to the back. Now it's behind the other three shapes on our slide. Now let's flip over to page 2-46. Go to the Home tab. Click on our Select button. And we want to choose Select All. So we're going to take all four of those items and group them together. Click on Shape Format up here again. Click on Group. Choose Group. And now this is one image or one shape instead of four different ones. If I click on it now, you see I just get the one set of handles around all four of them. So it's we basically group them all together. Anything we do now will apply to all of these. For example, if I were to take this and drag it down, all four of them get dragged down. I don't want to do that though, so let's click on Undo and get it back where it belongs. Now we're at the bottom of page 2-46. We're going to insert some additional shapes. We don't have to go to the Insert tab. We have some options here on Shape Format. We've got a list over here, and if we click on the More button, we'll get the exact same list that we would get on the Insert ribbon. First one we want to insert is the Moon. And the Moon is under Basic Shapes in the third row here, the third one in from the right. And to get that out there, you got to click and drag. Don't just click on the item here. You have to actually click on the slide to get the shape inserted. Next, we want the punched tape shape. That's under flow charts. It's in the second row. It's the fourth one over. Pause the mouse. When it says punch tape, click on that and click and drag. The last one we want is the sun shape. Let's go back over here. Click on the more button. Go to our basic shapes here, and it's right next to the moon in the third row here. Click on that, and we'll draw that out here as well. We want to format all of them the same. Let's make this look a little bit like the picture on page 2 47. So I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to drag this down. Then we want to select all three of these. So click on the moon, control click on the banner, and control click on the sun. Let's go to our shape styles up here. Click on the down arrow. And we want to go to the third row, the third item over. That'll give us white text on a green background. Go ahead and click that. And because we selected all of them, all three of them will turn green. Now we're at the top of page 2-47. We want to separate them, so just click off of the selection somewhere. Click on the moon. We want it to be 1.5 inches tall and 0.8 inches wide. So for height, 1.5, and for width, 0.8. The sun should be 1.5 by 1.5. Select the sun. And the banner should be 1.5 inches tall and 6.5 and inches wide. Select the banner. And change its height and width. We want to align the banner so that the left edge is 3 inches left of center. So 1, 2, 3 would be this line right here. So we're just going to drag it over a little bit so its left edge is right there. And we want the lower edge 3.5 inches below center. 1, 2, 3. And so approximately halfway between here and here. And it looks like we're good with that already, so I'm not going to adjust it anymore. Then select the moon. This is item number six. Select the moon. Choose bring forward. It'll bring it in front of the banner. We want to align it so its right edge is two inches left of center. So click it and drag it over here. Then we want the bottom three and a half inches below the center, so that would be just a little bit higher here. Now in number seven, we want to align the sun so that the left edge is two inches right of center. So click on it. And two inches right of center would be this line right, uh, right here. And it doesn't say where to position the bottom edge of the sun, but we're going to position it three and a half inches below the center, just like we have with the other two items. Now we're going to merge these just like we did with the other shapes. So Need to select all three of them. The sun is selected. Hold the control key down, click on the banner. Hold the control key down and click on the moon. And now they're all selected. Flip over to page 2 48. 
We want to go to our Merge Shapes button over here on the far left. Click on the down arrow. And we want to click on Combine. Now we're on number four on page 2-48. Click on the shape. We want to insert some text. Just start typing the text. A smart thermostat. Then hit Enter to go to a new line. It works night and day. Now we're at the bottom of page 2-48. We want to hide the grid and the guides. So go back to our View tab up here. Turn off the guides. Turn off the grid lines. Now let's go to the top of page 2-49. And we're going to turn off the ruler as well. The next item on page 2-49 is to apply a picture fill to a shape. Let's go back to slide 4. We want to insert a 7-point star. It's the sixth one in the first row. So let's go to Insert, Shapes, and a 7-point star is this one right here. And it looks like it's going to be over here somewhere, so let's click and drag. We want it to be 3 inches by 3 inches. Go up to your height button here, change it to 3. Go to your width button, change that to 3 as well. And then we want to position it as shown in the picture. So we're going to position it using some of the guides that are already there. Before we start aligning the star, let's take a look at this arrow first. And as we position things relative to the existing items that are already on the slide here, we will see guidelines pop up. There will be a horizontal guide that pops up right through the middle of the arrow here. And when we get the bottom of our star resting on it, we'll see it. There we go. So that's one of the guides we want to use. And the other thing we want to do is we want to align this to the right edge of this box here. And when we get, we want the middle of this to be right under this. So let's drag it to the left a little bit. And when we get to the right spot, we'll see that red guide pop up. Now let's go to number two at the bottom of page 2-49. On the shape format ribbon up here, click on shape fill. Flip over to page 2-50. We're going to insert a picture. Click on picture. The picture was provided with the files from the textbook, so we're going to click on From a File. Select your Shelly Cashman folder. We want PowerPoint Module 2. Let's scroll down. There's Module 2. Double click on that. We get another folder. Double click on that one. Double click on that one. Double click on the Module folder. And we want the light bulb. Go ahead and click on Insert. And our slide should match the image on the middle of page 2 50. Now we're at the bottom of page 2-50. We're going to change a shape outline's weight. So we want to have the star selected. We want to go to shape outline up here. Click on weight. Six points is an option. Click on six points. Now we're going to change the color of the outline. Let's go to shape outline again. And let's go to our colors. We're going to choose green. And now your slide should look like the image at the bottom of page 2-51. Let's flip over to page 2-52. Now we're going to change the style of our outline. So let's go to shape outline here. Let's choose dashes. And we want round dot. First one here. They don't look all that round to me, but that's uh, what it's supposed to look like. Let's go to the bottom of page 2-52. We're going to add a shape effect. Click on shape effects here. We want to choose a glow option. And we want the bottom green one. It should say 18 point green accent color 2. Go ahead and click on that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to rotate the star. So let's go to our rotate button up here. Click on more options. And we want to choose a rotation of minus 15 degrees. So just back over what's there, type in minus 15, hit the Enter key, close out of here, and your picture should be rotated. Flip over to page 2-54. We're going to add a title. We're going to add a title to Manage Your Energy, which I have already done. So somewhere along the way, I got ahead of myself here. So just click on this and uh, delete what's there and replace it with Manage Your Energy. 
Okay, now we're in the middle of page 2-54 to add and format a shape. We want to go to slide one. We want to insert a rectangle. Click on your insert tab. Click on the shapes button. Go down to rectangles. Select the one called top corner snipped. Click and drag. We want it to be 2.2 by 2.2. So we'll go to the height and width over here and adjust them accordingly. And now we want to fill the shape with a picture. Let's go to our shape fill up here. Choose picture. Go from a file. Choose the house. It should take you back to where we were before, so you shouldn't have to do any searching. Click on insert, and the house is now inserted into our shape. We want to rotate it left 90 degrees, and we want to flip it. Okay, so rotate left 90, and then also on rotate is flip horizontal. So the leaf is coming out of the left side of the house, not the right side. Add a three-point outline to the rectangle. Let's go to outline, weight, three points. Change the outline style to square dot, and add a glow to it. So that's going to be under effects glow and we want the second one in the third row green 11 point green accent color 2 so go ahead and click on that display our ruler and guidelines again so let's go back to our view tab up here we'll turn all three of these on we want to position the rectangle so that the bottom right corner is at the intersection of six inches right of center and three inches below the center so the right edge is six inches to the right, and the bottom edge is three inches below. There we go. This should match the picture at the bottom of page 2-54. Click someplace else to deselect. And the next section is on adding a footer. We'll stop here, and we'll continue with the next video on page 2-55.